In this video, we're going to learn about a wonderful tool called IFTT, I-F-T-T-T, -T -T. but IFT really is the way that you're supposed to pronounce it. And what is IFT? Basically, it's a way to connect the many services that you already use. Like it says here, do more with the services you love. In today's digital world, most of us have at least a dozen accounts. Many of us have many more than that that make a big difference in our lives. A lot of us use Facebook, Twitter, and of course I could go on and on, name dropping dozens or hundreds of websites, online apps, and tools that have become very important to us in our lives today. And we use these things in our personal lives, yes, but a lot of us also use them in our professional lives. Now in addition to that, a lot of us have started to use smart devices. Maybe you use Amazon Echo. Maybe you use the automatic adapter in your car. Wemo switches in your house to turn lights on and off and things like that. Well, the wonderful thing about IFT is it can help combine all of those things together and connect them so that they work in ways that they otherwise wouldn't. So to get started using IFT, you can see there's a get started button that you can just click. You can also just click in the upper right where it says sign up. Put in your email and password and sign up. Give me a second to sign into my account and then I'll continue. So now that I'm signed in, let's talk about how IFT combines these services together. Well, basically the way it does it is by us using applets or what they call recipes to connect our digital tools together. And you'll notice that there are some applets or recipes that are already recommended for me. I could tweet my Instagrams as native photos on Twitter. I could back up photos that I'm tagged in on Facebook to an iOS photos album. I could tell Alexa, if I own an Amazon Echo, to find my phone. There's all of these different recipes, and I could just adopt one of these myself just by clicking on it and clicking turn on. Now, in order for this to really work, I would need to sign into Twitter and sign into Instagram. Okay, so let me click Instagram and I would have to click connect and then put in my Instagram username and password, log into Instagram, and that gives IFT permission to use some of my information from Instagram inside of IFT. Okay, once I do that, it empowers me in IFT to create recipes that make it so I can do things like tweet my Instagrams as native photos on Twitter. And so it's, it's really a pretty cool thing that you can do with IFT. Now these are just some pre-made recipes. I want to show you how to create recipes of your own. And of course you can also search for recipes. Okay, let's say I want a recipe that uses Alexa. I do a search and it brings up all of the Alexa applets that are already out there. Okay, so searching is also good in addition to just looking at the recommended applets. But I want to show you how to create an applet from scratch. All you would do is go up here to the upper left, click My Applets, click New Applet, and it brings you to the basic if-then statement. This is why they call it IFT. If this, then that. And this is just like programming. If you've done any programming, you know about if-then statements. And you can use if-then statements to program computers to do what you want them to do. Well, IFT allows you to program your digital world. And not only that, but the real world. Your smart devices that help control if your door is locked or if your lights are on or that tell you where your car currently is. All of these things can be programmed in IFT. So let's look at how this is done. If this, so I'm going to click on the plus sign and choose what the this is. What is the trigger, basically, that will cause the effect to happen? And you'll notice that there's a lot of different services that are available in IFT. Now, I would need to have an account for most of these to make them actually work, and I don't really have an account for all of these tools. Who does, right? But I do have at least you know 20 or 30 of these, and I can start to combine them together to do some cool things and useful things. Okay, so back up to the top of the list. I want to start with just a basic one. I'm going to use the date and time service. So if date and time, and then I can choose to do a trigger every day at a certain time, every hour at a certain time, every day of the week at a certain time, every month, every year. Just as a simple example, I'm going to click every year on, how about January 1st at 12 a.m., and zero minutes. So now I'm gonna click create trigger. So that's my if. Then what do I want to have happen? So I'll click the second plus sign. And I would like my then to utilize Gmail. 
So I'm going to type in Gmail in the search. There it is. So I click that. I'll have to connect to my Gmail account, but that's okay. Down at the bottom of this box, I need to allow IFT to get this information and use it. And I want it to send an email. And I can make it so that it'll send an email to up to five recipients. So I'm going to put in a friend's email address. Now, if I'd like, I can put a comma here and add another email address up to five. Next, I need to decide what is the message that I want these recipients to get. How about Happy New Year? Now, you'll notice that IFT put in a standard statement there, but you can change it like I just did. And that'll be the subject of my email. Now, the body of my email, by default, it does include this. Currently, it's, and it uses an ingredient. Okay, so these are recipes, but the recipes have the possibility of having ingredients. And I'm going to zoom in on this just a little so you can see it a little bit better. But notice it says, currently, it's, and it checks the time. Whatever the time is, it plugs it in. And then there's also an embed code here that's being used. Now, if you want to, you can also put in a URL into your Gmail message. So all I have to do now is click Create Action, and this recipe, this applet, will be created. I do want you to see how to put in an ingredient, though. You'll notice if you click Add Ingredient, there's Check Time. And so it'll check the time and put it in as the URL in this case, and that doesn't make sense, so I'm going to delete it. But if I want to have the time in the body of the message like it is, I would just click put add ingredient, check time. So that's how you put in additional ingredients that come from the services that you've connected. Okay, I'm ready, I'm happy with this, and I'm ready to create the action. I'll just click create action, and here's my recipe. I just review it, make sure it looks the way I want it to look, that it's gonna do what I want it to do, and then decide, do I wanna get a notification from IFT when this applet or recipe runs? And I think I do. For the sake of my friend that's getting the email, I think I do want to be reminded 10 years from now that he's continuing to get an email at midnight on January 1st. So I want to leave that on. But if you want to turn it off, you just switch it off. The recipe will still run, but you won't be notified of it. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. And now that applet, that recipe, is created and is added to my list of applets. Now at any time, I can click here where it says on, it takes me into the applet and I can turn it off. It'll still keep that recipe, but it's switched off and it will stop running. If you decide you'd like to permanently get rid of an applet, just click here on the gear symbol and then go down and at the very bottom of the recipe, you should have a delete button. Okay, so those are the basics of using IFT to create recipes that work with your different services and tools that you have accounts with or that you own. So in the rest of this video, I'd like to show you some of my favorite applets that teachers can use in the classroom or in their digital lives, but really anyone could use these as well. And I'm gonna zoom in again so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so this next recipe I wanna share with you and recommend is one that uses Twitter. Now you're probably a much better Twitter user than I am. I know Twitter's important and I use it, mostly to learn for myself, but I often forget to post my own Twitter messages. And this will help me to remember because it'll do it for me, okay? So my if is this, if, and I click the plus sign, and then I'm gonna go to date and time, and I'll say if every day of the week, okay, and then I'm gonna choose what day of the week I want to send this automatic tweet. And I would like to send it out on Thursday, every Thursday, and not just Thursday, but it needs to be Thursday, at let's say 7 p.m. I want to send out a tweet to my students and to their parents and to anyone else that might be following me and I want them to get it Thursday at 7 p.m. So I'll click create trigger. I've got the if portion in. Now the that. What do I want to have happen when that trigger is pulled? Well in this case I'd like Twitter to do something so I'll click on Twitter and I could have it post a tweet, post a tweet with an image, send a direct message, do all of these different things. But I'm going to select just basic post a tweet. By default, it's going to say another Thursday, right? It's, and then it'll say the time, 7 p.m. And then I can continue this message or I could delete that and just start from scratch. But I think I'll leave that in and I'll put in a period and I'll say, remember to study for our weekly quiz. Now hopefully that's not too long of a message. Let's look at the ingredients that you have. Basically, check time, check day of the week. Those are already being used. I can click Create Action. And now every Thursday of every week at 7 p.m., 
that will be tweeted out to my followers. So that's an example of a recipe that's useful as a teacher. It helps my students and it helps me to get my job done. Going into my applets list, I want to focus in on a few other recipes that I use. Here's one that I like. So let's say I'm using YouTube. I watch a video that I like. I just click the like button in YouTube and it will automatically save that item, in this case to Instapaper. I could have used Pocket instead, but in this case it will save it to my Instapaper account. You can see it'll give me a URL to the video. It'll try to put an embed code in there too, and it'll give me a description, and even put it in a particular folder in Instapaper. So this recipe helps me to not lose track of those videos that I like on YouTube. Another one that I haven't tried before but I'm eager to use is one that will automate the process of posting to multiple services. For example, I have a blog, but sometimes I forget to also post it to my Facebook page and I sometimes forget to tweet about it. Well, I can automate that in Ift. I can say if, and then I can go down and choose blogger, any new post, then I would like to post it to Facebook. Now you can see the options on Facebook. You can just make it a status message. You can create a link post, which is probably what I should do. And then I can put in a message, something like, read my latest blog entry. And you can see that there's different ingredients that I can include along with that, ingredients that come from Blogger. And I could also make one that tweets about my blog as well. Here's another favorite of mine. If there's a new liked tweet by my Twitter account, then I want to append that tweet to a note in my Evernote account. And so every time I'm on Twitter, read a tweet that I like. Once I like it, it will be automatically added to an Evernote note and it'll append it. It will add it to that note. So again, a way to automatically save things that I like and document them. Here's another one that I like. And this one utilizes a service called Weather Underground. And to use this recipe, you don't even have to have an account with Weather Underground. But basically, you just select if Weather Underground, and then you just say, text me the weather every morning. You choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. And in this case, I have it send me an SMS text message. And this is the format in which it sends it to me. But notice that you can change that. You can put in what are the important things about the weather that you would like to know, and how do you want them to be sent to you and then just click save. So the way this works for me is every morning at 6.30 a.m. I get a text message telling me what the weather's gonna be like. I'm notoriously bad at caring about the weather and so I often find myself caught in a snowstorm or a rainstorm with no coat. And so this is a way to remind me on my way out the door to school, make sure you bring that jacket with you. All right, I wanna show you a couple of applets now that deal with real world objects that help you turn off lights in your house or that utilize your car and things like that. So I'm gonna jump into my applets and this is the one that I'd like to share with you. This applet recipe utilizes a gadget called Automatic and I'll put a link to Automatic in the description below. But this is a little gadget that you plug into your car underneath the steering wheel basically in most cases. And once you've plugged that in and signed up for a free automatic account, it can pull lots of data, lots of information from your car, including if there's a check engine light that comes on and things like that. It can send you information about what the problem might be. But it also tracks where you drive. It tracks how much gas you're burning and things like that, how efficiently you're driving. Are you going too fast, etc. So I linked IFT to my automatic account and I set this up so that if the ignition in my automatic car is turned off in a specific area, then send an email from my Gmail account. And so here's a look at the map, and it basically says, if my car is turned off in this area, then send an email to my wife that says, honey, I'm home. Okay, and that's just the beginning. You could do all sorts of things using automatic. Okay, this next one involves the Wemo. And if you're not familiar with the Wemo, it's a smart plug that you can plug into your outlet. And now anything that's plugged into that plug is controllable, at least to some degree, by using your phone or in this case, by automating it with IFT. So what would this look like? You would say IF and then click, type in Wemo, and you can see there's all sorts of different Wemo devices, but most of them are switches and things like that. But I could say if my Wemo, and of course I would have to connect this, 
But if it's on, then do something. Or more often than not, you might say something like, if the date and time every day at, let's say, 11.45, I want to create a trigger. And what I want to have happen is I would like the switch to turn off. And that could be Wemo lighting, or it could just be a Wemo insight switch or a Wemo smart plug. Anyway, what I could do is make it so that at 11.45, the lights turn off, you know, the radio turns off, whatever is plugged in automatically turns off because the house is going to sleep. So that's just one example. And again, I'll put a link to the Wemo device in the description below. As I mentioned earlier, there's also things that you can do with Amazon Alexa, which is the personal assistant that comes with Amazon Echo. And there's some really fun things that you can do with this. You can make these Alexa triggers where if you say a specific phrase like Alexa trigger house, then the Wemo lights turn off or Alexa trigger and then anything else, you can set up your own triggers, then it will do any number of things that you choose. So it's really an exciting thing if you have an Amazon Echo, if you use Alexa. And again, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to learn more about Amazon Echo. The prices are much cheaper than when I first got my Echo. Basically, you can get started using the Amazon Echo with Alexa for about $50. So those are just a few of the many applets that I use, many of which are for my own personal use at my home. But I hope that you can see that there's also many ways you can use this in the classroom to automate things like posting to blogs, posting to Twitter, and those real world devices that I mentioned like Wemo, Alexa, and Automatic, those could also be useful in a school setting, especially the Wemo and Alexa. You could put Wemo smart plugs or other smart plugs in the classroom, hook things up, and then be able to control those with the triggers that you create, just as one example. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have some examples of IFT recipes that are useful for teachers, I would love to hear from you. Please add a comment to the video. And let's use this space to share great ideas about how to use IFT in the classroom or from a teacher's perspective. So again, thanks for watching. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video at least every Monday.